John, I just want to first of all ask you about uh, obviously there's going to be a change of manager at Manchester United. What you made of, of that situation, and again it goes back to what happened, I suppose, with the England job as well. We're not seeing an, an English manager, head coach linked w with that role as well. What does that say about the, s the state? Well, of firstly, I don't. You know, no one wants it. Well, people in the game, no one wants to see managers getting the sack. Um, uh, but eventually, that's the nature of the business. We all understand it. Um, I think results hadn't gone to their liking, of course, over a period of time. And Man United have a, certainly have a high demand. And I suppose, you know, the only thing I would say is that I think there's been a fair time scale um, for the manager and, and resources available for such a for such a highly regarded manager to, you know, sort of get a grip to what it is, I suppose. But like I say, I mean, it's hard. You know, it's hard at any level. It's hard spending, not spending money, no money. You've got to win games, you know, and eventually that's what you get judged on. Um, but I wish him well. I'm sure there'll be something else big for him. Um, I know that. And then secondly, um, I think I think we spoke about the England job. I, I think it's the way the modern game is now. And I don't think even, you know, there's a time maybe when managers have to have a real depth of what they were doing to almost earn up the ladder of football to get jobs. And I think it's changed now. You know, these coaches are coming out of, you know, odd places, maybe not as experienced, not as much depth and all of them sort of things. And I think that's changed since it was manager rather than, uh, sorry, coach, rather than manager. I think that's a change in how the game's in. I know we discussed this recently that, you know, the head coach role is different. So I don't always think clubs are looking for that depth. Um, well, that's how it seems. It might not be the case, but that's the impression I get from looking at the outside in. Whereas, you know, when you look 15 years ago, it was management. So therefore the managers would probably be considered to have enough knowledge to have or enough depth of their experience to, to take maybe a club like Man United. So I think that's changed. I think a lot of the management side of the, the, the job is changed now um, at certain clubs where they're doing all that. You know, there'll be someone who will do contracts, do the running of the club, do the finance, everything will be taken away and the manager purely coaches. So I think that's a modern view of, or it seems to me, a modern view of where it's going and possibly where it's at, or where it's at first actually and where it might be going. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But, but anyway, back to the point, sorry, a lot of waffle. Um, I don't see it as being anything other than trying to get the right person to do the job. I'm not bothered whether English, foreign, doesn't matter to me. It's the right person and they've deemed, well, seemingly, they've deemed the right person to do the job and it looks like it's going to be Amaral. Have you any thoughts now on how English coaches get that body of work that attracts them? Well, you've, got to, you've got to get the chance first of all and that's hard enough you know only 20 pre well if we're using the Premier League as, a, as an example there's only 20 Premier League jobs available um, we've also discussed recently about the, the amount of foreign ownership so therefore that sometimes can slant their views on whether they want a foreign manager or an English manager or a British manager and and you've still got to be good you've got to know you've got to know what you're doing you've got to be able to produce what people want um, and you know often the perception is more important than the facts now so you've got to be, you've got to be perceived to be good enough as well not actually good enough but just perceived to be good enough and that's that's a change a radical change i've noticed in the game over the last certainly over the last 10 years that i've been in the premier league as you mentioned ownership um standard question week in week out yeah same as it was as last week no, and they, the week before no, that, the week no before contact that, the week before that. yeah there's no 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 it's just same as it is and you know waiting for things to um take place if they're going to how do you assess where you're at though at the moment three points off newcastle bournemouth and fulham four points off brentford and spurs unbeaten in five yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a balanced view of the situation. We didn't make a good start of the season. That was obvious. A lot of different challenges, um, which I know from inside the, the, the camp, especially injuries. I did say well, I thought we were getting players not just fit, but, but Premier League fit. And I think that's beginning to show with some of the performances. I think we were wide of our mark last time out, but we still got a, a valuable point. Um, I think the... Um, the work that the staff, myself, put in and the players, and I think it's beginning to show signs again. And, and we've been through this before where challenges come our way and we come through it. And I think that's an important part of sort of the fabric of what the club has been over the last few years and what it continues to be at this, this current time. And I think that the team have to show that. And I think we are doing once again. And, you know, a tough, a tough run without doubt. Not the results we wanted to start the season with. And then we, we slowly sort of begin to grind and play our way out of things. And we're showing signs of doing that. And we have done it before, so we, we just continue with the progress that we can make. James Harkowski said after the Fulham game in his first season here, if we'd gone down 1-0, we probably wouldn't have come back into that game. Do you go along with that? And, and if so, how much of a positive is that again to take from that result against Fulham? Well, you, you try and set the scene, you try and set the, the culture and the environment. Um, and I did mention after the game that relentless attitude towards winning. Um, you know, I think it can be uh, built over time and we've tried to do that and we've shown real good signs of it in varying periods and then other signs where we haven't quite obviously even earlier this season. Um, 
well, we haven't seen games through and we haven't gone to the, the last breath of the game, which I always say to the players. But against um, uh, the last time out, sorry, we did do that. You know, we went into that game with a real strong mentality. We didn't perform well. But the second half, that the relentlessness I, I preached them was on show, I thought, because the last seven, eight minutes of the game, we started getting on the front foot, started reacting to the fact they'd scored. And it was a very positive reaction and, and found a way to score a goal. And sometimes, you know, in my experience of the Premier League, I, I, know, I know that's valid. You know, there are certain teams that I mentioned straight afterwards. Certain teams, I, I don't think, well, now and again, you see Pep change their style at the very end of a game, but not so much. But most teams have to find a way, and we certainly do, of, of getting points and wins. And that's what I try and concentrate on. So I was pleased with the adaptation we had to show and the play show to go and get a point. What difference does a goal like that make for better? I'm not thinking that immediately you think you're going to have to start him the next week, but at the same time, he's obviously not been scoring regularly. So for him to have that moment and show the emotion that he did after the game. It builds belief and confidence. You know, in, in all players for, as a team when you're winning, but strikers, if you're winning or you're getting points from their goals, it bounds to bring a, or it's bound to, sorry, bring a, a real good feel factor. Um, that sense of involvement, sense of being part of it all. Um, like all here, he's had his question marks, but he's continuing to learn. He keeps working hard on the training ground, trying very well again today. So he's showing signs that he's fit, he's available and he wants to play. We see an opportunity of the next two games for Everton to really push towards those mid-table spots now as well. How do you see it, obviously, with Southampton and West Ham to come before the international break? Yeah, I mean, you know, still tough games, awkward games, they all are. That You know, different ways, of course, you know, some of them fighting for their first win. Expectation may be changed at West Ham after spending, different manager. Um, different challenges in the Premier League. I think the diversity of the Premier League is, is part of its magic. Um, so, yeah, back to us going down there. We've, we've got to perform, I feel, better than we did in the last game, but we've equally got to show the same mentality. You know, the grit and determination to go down there and play well, but also have that strong jaw aligned with getting points and getting results and winning games. And we did that um, with, with a lot of, I felt, a lot of good control against Ipswich. We've got to find that, that, that kind of performance level again down at Southampton as a start point or a restart. Joe? Oh, Southampton one for the for the cup. Exit. No, I don't think of it like that. The last one doesn't guarantee the next one. It's about the 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 mind, the clear mindedness to go down there and deliver a performance. And just to check on the injury situation, obviously we were at training today. No Dwight McNeil, no James Garner. How are they? How far away are they from being? Dwight available? Dwight's got a chance. Um, we're hopeful. Um, he's done a bit of work with the physio team today, so we're hopeful on him. Um, Duke has well had a, a, a situation, but he's he's been out there on the grass today, so we'll see how that reacts tomorrow. Uh, Jimmy Garner's very unfortunate. He's got a longer-term injury. I mentioned last week about um, getting an assessment from the specialists and they've advised a period to slow him down again, take him off the grass. So we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But it's going to be weeks, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be days, that's for sure. Um, it's a, a back injury that they've just got to be a bit careful with. It's not aligned with his previous one. It's just a, one of them things. Um, so we're going to have to be careful with it. But it is going to be a longer period one, not a short one. Is it when you say weeks, are you looking at, at more than one month? Yeah, well, yeah, probably more so, you know. I mean, he's, you've got to remember he's three, three and a half, three to three and a half weeks. I can't remember the exact day when it, when it sort of occurred, but that kind of head start. And then from here, a number of weeks, yeah. So it's, it's going to be beyond a month, I'm pretty sure of that. But we'll see. We'll see how quickly it settles. Shame for you, I'm shame for you. Yeah, of course. And with Tim, you know, having a broken sort of uh, or a stressed bone in his foot, that's another challenge with two, two good young midfield players out for us. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to Stuart. Thanks, Vinny. Is there anything hey. more concrete on Armando Dwyer as well? When he, when you hope he's going to be available? Yeah, he's back. He's working hard. His, his stats are good, but he's still with the um, sports science team. The crossover will start to occur over the maybe even uh, next week, where he just starts with the, the light stuff with us and starts joining warm ups and possession games, and then builds into a, a, a kind of journey back to playing. Um, but he's been out a, a fair while, so he will have to have some games in there as well. With um, Branthwaite. Available, seemingly available. Um, does the form of Keane and Tarkovsky at centre back give him quite a nice uh, sort of fix, uh, dilemma, selection dilemma? Yeah, and, and Jake's learning all the time. Jake's training very well as well. You know, I want that com uh, competitive element across the squad where we can have it because we are a bit limited with numbers. But when we're all fit, then I think there is a very competitive squad. Um, and I think that's good for them, and, and particularly the centre half. So obviously, Jared had a real strong season last season, and with Tarky, and then Keno's having a strong start to this season and doing well. and Tyke is being his solid self that he is. And Jake's also in the pack because he's showing signs, that, particularly through training and, and uh, his development. So it's a good four, I think. You see Southampton at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. It's harder for teams who come up from the Championship to stay up than ever. 
Well, I don't know. It's been a long time since I, I went up the, like that pathway. Um, the, 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 the gap seemingly, from what, I, from what I'm told from some of the managers I know in the championship, they, they feel the gap has got bigger, both financially and with the, the, the kind of quality levels of the teams and, and who can do what. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure, but I, and it depends on, you know, a lot's made at the minute about the, the parachute money. If you go down and you've got, you're in a position to reinvest, there's a fair chance if you reinvest well, you're going to be strong. But some clubs are not in the, the chance to reinvest. They have to bring the money in and then balance it all out again. So it depends on the situation of the club. Um, but it, I would say it's, a, it's an advantage if you come down, as long as the club's running on a good, good level, that you get them parachute payments. But so you've earned the right to be in there in the first place. So therefore, you know, you should have an advantage because that's the, the chance to get in the Premier League and hopefully stay. And if you don't, you come out of it, but you're strong again to try and get back in it. And that's the nature of the, the game. Thanks, Hi Sean, Phil from Radio Merseyside. On Nathan Patterson, his career at Everton's been pretty stop-start, often through injury. Is it time, now that he's back available, back on the bench, that he gets a bit of a run in the team? And will it need a bit of patience when he does appear in the first yeah, team? Yeah, it's, 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 time, it's time when he's ready to appear in the first team. You know, he's, he's had a real, quite a serious injury. Um, he's coming through it. He's working hard to come through it. I did mention, as he's still a quite young player, the game period coming out of that long injury would be um, of real use to him. Um, and then getting him to a level when he's, he's ready to compete and play in the first team. It's not, no one's holding anyone back here. If you're ready to play and you're deemed fit enough and well enough to play and, you, and your form is good, then you play. Um, that side of it's pretty simple. I just wondered if uh, something that has always intrigued me about Patterson was Seamus Coleman, for example. When he started out at Everton, he had a period of time on the right wing under David Moyes. Is it something you'd ever consider for Patterson, given he's quite an attacking fullback? Um, yeah, I think I think maybe the the players are very specific nowadays. You know, when you players in academies now, you know they talk about bringing up you know players in the number six role, the number eight role. You know, the right back is a right back. I think that kind of open mindedness of where players players kind of changed a bit because they're brought from such a young age. You know, one position. I personally don't believe in it. I think you should be experiencing lots of different positions because you do find that a player can play another position. Um, but a lot of these players are brought up with one position in mind. The odd one goes into a different position, but not as many in the old days as was in the old days, I mean, because players could multitask pretty easily, I thought. Um, back to the point on Patterson, I think he's a, more of a right back. I think maybe he could do the job on the right side, um, but I think it would take him time to develop into that role. Your form has picked up recently. I imagine confidence for the players has as well. With that in mind, do you think that you could maybe go a bit more on the front foot against teams that maybe are struggling in the division or maybe in games at Goodison? You've got to remember you don't deliberately go on the front foot or deliberately not. You do it tactically. So, you know, if you if you deem a team to have a lot of the ball but they don't actually get it, penetrate you, then that's a tactical decision. If you deem a team to have a lot on the ball but you can break that early on in the, the passage of play, higher at the pitch, then that's a tactical decision. So... Depends on what we decide from analysing the opposition. Depends on what we decide from our side of things, what suits us against the opposition. Inevitably, you've got to do the thing that wins because when you do that right, all of you think that we're tactical geniuses. That's the simplicity of the game. And James Tarkovsky mentioned after the game last week that the team are, are running more than they did in the first few games of the season, which is obviously when the defeats came. Uh, is it taking longer than you thought it would for the players to get up to speed fitness-wise? Yeah, but we had so many uh, disjointed weeks in pre-season, which uh, you know I've documented clearly. Um, we we started off really well, good good numbers, everyone fit, came back really looked after themselves, and then we 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 lost weeks, you know, and we could lose an odd day, but losing players to two two weeks, two you know ten days, two weeks, three weeks in pre-season, and that that work is so important during pre-season, and when you miss it, of course, you go into the season and then you're playing catch up all the time. So I think I mentioned at the start of the interview, I think there's a lot of players here who were. Uh, nearly fit and now getting Premier League fit, then your stats improve and if your stats improve there's a fair chance it correlates with better performances and therefore better results. I've been in it a long time in the Premier League and, it, and it is, it's not a perfect analysis but it's, it's, it's a pretty solid analysis. If you're running more the opposition, you're pressing more the opposition and you're delivering physical performances more the opposition, over time you will win games. If you can add in quality that I think we have in organisation, then of course it's a better mixture to get success. So we've been searching for true fitness. We're still not there yet. I've mentioned some of the injured players. Um, but the ones who are fit are getting Premier League fit now, and I think that's showing through the performances. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Any further questions <coughs> in the open section? <coughs> Excuse <on>? me. <coughs>